Hello everyone, my name is Jakub Polacik and as a Vice President of New York Dance and Arts Innovation, we have another wonderful composer artist, Xu Winkley, who is going to share with us her thoughts on the quarantine talks. So Xu Winkley, I got to know her many, many years ago. She studied in uh, the Shanghai Conservatory, but she came to the USA to study at the Harvard School of Music. She did under great studies there. And later she moved to Michigan where she got her master degree and DMA in composition. And she also has a lot of stories to share with the Chopin and Friends Festival because she created the Four Corners Ensemble that premiered the works by the comp composition competition winners. After living for a while in New York and also in Boston, she is in Spokane at the University of Gonzana in the Washington state. So we welcome Shu Winkley. Hello, Shu Wing, nice to see you. Hi, Jacob, thanks for having me. It's a pleasure. So Shu Wing, can you tell us a little bit about your recent six, uh, six months uh, and how did you spend it? How was it? And how was your move to Spokane? Tell us a bit about that. Uh, okay, if we count uh, back six months, that would have been March, April, since the beginning of the um, quarantine. Uh, I guess in the beginning, at the beginning of the March, all of my performances and um, you know residencies started to get canceled. So we spent the first two months at home with uh, our little one because his daycare also uh, got canceled in Boston. And then uh, those two months were nice, lots of family time. I didn't really get to work that much because you know the four-year-old requires lots of attention. Um, of course, and then in May. But you composed some new pieces. I remember you said that you composed something, right? During I this time, compose, I composed a piece for um, a Mizu International Composers Festival uh, for the Alarm Will Sound Ensemble. That piece mm -hmm. was written during that time. Okay, um, how long is the piece? The and what's the instrumentation? Is about uh, eight minutes. It's for chamber orchestra, and then Alarm Will Sound actually had a reading session in August and they will bring us back in person, hopefully next summer. Um, right. And then have like a live concert of that piece. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and That's then nice. in May, we moved to Spokane, Washington from Boston. So we moved to the West Coast from the East Coast uh, during the pandemic. Uh, the whole family moved because I got this job at uh, Gonzaga University. Um, it was supposed to start in September. We thought we would just move here, settle in and you know, get more time to be prepared. Since we're, we're so congratulations, it's a, it's a big move. It's a big move. Yes, yes. Uh, it was pretty smooth. We, um, we had a few boxes shipped over and we, we took flights here. Um, and then our little one started daycare, so I got more time to work. Um, I guess I worked on preparing my, uh, for my new job, you know, the lesson plans for the classes I'm going, I was going to teach. I also did a little bit of composing. Not so much, uh, also because you know all the projects have been postponed. Some deadlines are postponed as well. Um, That's right. That's yeah, it was right. a nice, nice summer here in Spokane because there are lots of things to do. You know, lots of hiking, tubing, uh, outdoor stuff. And then I started this job in September. So far, it's mm -hmm. been almost two months. Uh, it's going going well, I guess. Great. Do you miss New York? Do you miss Boston? Oh, I definitely miss New York and Boston a lot. Uh, Spokane is really nice, but it's very different. It's not a big city. Um, and as an Asian, um, I, of course, crave Asian food, in, which are not so... But, you know, tell me also about this, your process, about this, even the last, last piece that you composed. Does it have any reference to the current time, or is just... Uh, what's the topic of the piece that you composed for the I Misu? Think I composed uh, titled Weeping, uh, Sweeping and Weeping. Um, mm -hmm. It indeed has some connection to to the COVID, to the you know pandemic. Uh, initially, I, I thought this idea of sweeping, uh, meaning you know the virus, how the virus, why virus swept over all over and then the weeping uh, represents, I don't know, the one stage or our, you know, common status, which we were all grieving um, our losses. So it has something to do with the quarantine at the beginning, but then later I guess the music just took over, um, like took off 
um, beyond that because you know how sometimes music can be abstract and then it it goes with its own direction. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay, and also tell us, uh, Shui, now if we talk about this year move, also tell about your ensemble. I wanted to also ask you about the Four Corners ensemble that I had the pleasure to collaborate for the last few years uh, because Four Corners was a residence uh, ensemble for the Chopin and Friends Festival when I'm an artistic director. And so tell us about your memories of the last two years when we had this composition competition, and because we also played some of your works, we played your concertos that maybe you will tell a little bit about us because recently just got released in your own CD with this uh, small concertos. So tell about your memories. And last year we also did your um, chamber opera about that. Sure. I mean, um, the Chopin Festival has have definitely been, you know, uh, one of the highlights for, for Corners Ensemble. Um, it was, so we, we participated um, two years in a row, and then those two years uh, events were, I would say, one of the most important events um, for those two seasons. We had a, a great time uh, connecting with New York's audience, and then also, and it was great pleasure working with you and many uh, more composers. Some of those were selected from uh, the competition. I mean, the tell us about the ensemble, because general ensemble, about the players. Players are from the different part of the world, and players also don't live in the same space. So actually, this is a very interesting idea. Okay, so for Corners Ensemble, uh, we are currently a 501c3 uh, nonprofit organization. Uh, it was founded in 2017. Um, initially, we, again, you know, still were our mission is to promote contemporary music uh, and cultural diversity because our, originally our members were from different countries. Each single member is from a different country and you know, different cultural backgrounds. Um, so we are dedicated to the mission of cultivating diversities and international collaboration through creating and performing contemporary music uh, with musicians from different cultures. So um, you know, being part of the Chopin Festival is definitely uh, aligns really well with our mission. We got, we got you uh, collabor collaborate with um, more like Polish culture. It was uh, like eye-opening experience for us. And my concerto, two of my concertos got premiered uh, at the Chopin Festival, uh, the flute and the clarinet. And later those two were included in the album we just released. It, it's our um, debut album for Connors had um, was just released September 25th last month. What is the, what's the label of the company? Where can we find it? Uh, so the label is Parma. Uh, the, well, more specifically, it's Novana Records. Uh, you can find, you can search uh, for Connors Ensemble. The title is Word Map. Uh, Word Map is the album's name. If you search that. Uh, do you have maybe a cover to show us? Do you have something that you can uh, do yeah, you have a cover? I can, I can show you. I can share mm -hmm. my screen. So, um, yeah, I'll do. okay, Four Corners Warm Up Concerts, okay. Uh, and it's available on Spotify, Amazon Music, Apple Music, uh, Naxos. Mm -hmm. You can purchase physical copy as well uh, on Amazon.com. I, I will send you a physical copy uh, before well, thank I you very much. fly to Boston. Yes. Yeah, so I remember because we did this at the end of our conversation, we play some of your work and I was thinking maybe it would be good to play the piece, some of this uh, from the CD, but I was thinking about your maybe flute concerto, which was also played at the Polish consulate. Yes. So, so we, will, we will share with that. But also tell us about the idea of those concertos because you compose four concertos, right? Uh, and they were- Five. Right. So each one for, is for a different player and for the different instruments. And yes. how did you- uh, refer to the culture, different culture. How did you do that? So it's a collection of five mini concerto for quintet. Uh, so each each performer gets to be soloist in one piece. Um, and I aim to take listeners on a journey around the world, you know, uh, opening their ears to music's evolution as an international uh, unifier. Uh, each concerto focuses on a um, unique specific culture um, originally, that's some um, culture, um, cultural, geographical, and personal identity behind each soloist. So I have five of them. The instrumentation is flute, clarinet, violin, concerto, and piano. Therefore, we have five concertos. 
Um, <clears throat> okay, so like Matilda's Dream is the cello concerto. Um, so I quoted the very famous, like unofficial Australian anthem, What's in Matilda? Uh, and the European leg of the journey is represented by the dryad, uh, the flute concerto. That is a nostalgic piece inspired by Hans Christian Andersen's fairy tale of the same name, Dryad. Yeah, I was, yes, I was in, I remember I was in his house, very great writer yes. in Denmark. Yes, yeah, yes and as well as Schubert's art song, uh, Dear Lindenbaum, The Linden Tree. That is a, a song that's very special to our flute player, Erica. Uh, and the American variations written for uh, Josh Anderson. Um, I used, um, I came up with this original theme and set the variations based on um, some uh, quintessential American genres, including jazz, ragtime, klezmer, rock, and uh, pop rock, and so on. I remember it, it was played at the Polish Council. I remember this piece, yes. And the Korean culture and traditional music are the focus of the Peace House, which draws its name uh, from the inter Korean Peace House architecture uh, that architecture is in between the South and North Korea. Um, th this was written for our uh, violinist, Chris Christina Adams. And then finally, Kenton's Snowstorm, the piano concerto gives the album a touch of surrealism with a pianistic depiction of a wintry weather in subtropical Canton in China. Yeah, so those are- Where, where the pianist was from. Yes, and tell me also about the future. Do you have future plans to perform it, uh, this piece maybe? What are the plans of the Four Corners currently? Uh, yeah, we originally had a plan to uh, actually work with um, Shanghai Philharmonic. I, I will arrange this whole series to, uh, you know, full orchestra size and inviting um, Four Corners over to Shanghai, working with Shanghai Philharmonic. Um, before that, uh, the plan was to work with Heart, the Heart Orchestra uh, in Hartford, Connecticut, um, you know, where I graduated. I did my college there. Um, that was supposed to be September in Hartford and November in Shanghai, but then both uh, both projects got. Um, so currently, Falcons does not really have any uh, active plan throughout the season. Just like do you do, do you do online wear rehearsals? Do you do? Do you meet online? Um, we currently do not really have any online rehearsals. We thought it's this is, would be a good time for all of us to to reflect, uh, to recharge, uh, and to plan for you know future seasons. Yes, you also were you you were supposed to go to Aspen as I remember. So how was it? So did you have online uh, online like uh, meetings or how was it? Oh, this whole entire thing got postponed to next year. I was also supposed to go to uh, Copland's house um, for a residency. That didn't really, the in-person part didn't happen. We, we had some online components, um, and, which is good, you know, because something still happened. And I was also supposed to go to Mizu uh, festival that didn't happen. We did some online activities as well. And the next year we'll, we're going back for in-person experience, which is good. Mm -hmm. Hopefully next year those will happen. At this point, we still don't know. Mm -hmm. Okay. But how about also your future plans? What are you, what are you writing now? And what are your future plans of composition? Uh, I currently am working on two commissions. Uh, one is um, commissioned by the Women's Wind Ensemble uh, on the piece uh, about Rosa Parks. Um, they're doing this uh, series of uh, significant women in the US and I, I chose Rosa Parks. Um, <clears throat> and I'm also working on commission by the uh, Central Virginia, the Chamber Society of Central Virginia. Mm -hmm. That's uh, that nice. We'll have a premiere in May 2021. And I still have this project of creating this opera with uh, librettist Julian Crouch that, you know, he has uh, finished his libretto. I haven't just gotten time to start uh, the music writing. Part of the reason is this new job. It, um, you know, it, it's taken lots of time. I'm hoping in the winter break, I get to have some time to compose. Mm -hmm. So when is, when is, is, what is actually the date of the premiere? Is it 2021, 22? Is there any date of this piece? Uh, the opera? Yeah, it's opera. Opera, it doesn't really have a date yet. I guess mm -hmm. I have until the end of 2021 to finish it. And then we'll see uh, when the premiere will be in Shanghai. It's because it's a, it's a project uh, sponsored by Shanghai Conservatory Music. 
So it's still a year to do it. Yes. I it's have very time. good. Shanghai is, it looks it's very active now. There are so many things yeah. going on at Shanghai. Back. But then mm -hmm. again, I cannot go there because uh, of the pandemic. Yes, yes. But you also, you are, uh, you, like you, you have connected, you are a researcher, right? Also with the, with the Shanghai Conservatory, right? I'm a, I'm a, uh, yes, a postdoctoral researcher there. For keep working, right? And collaborating with Shanghai Conservatory. Tell me also about your, your students, about what are you teaching now in Spokane? Uh, how do you teach and how do, how do the lesson look like? Yeah, I'm currently teaching, um, three music theory classes. Um, oh, I guess over time, my teaching load will shift to composition gradually because um, I was hired as the uh, assistant professor of composition and music theory. And to, um, the one of the, uh, the job is to build uh, the composition program. Almost, you know, I'm, I'm currently revising the com composition curriculum. Hopefully we can attract uh, more composition students joining us um, in the mm -hmm. near future. So uh, I also have two composition students right now. Uh, we're doing lessons. In the class so far, online I, online lesson, right, or in person? Uh, I I do hybrid for both my classes and lessons. So far, I have been doing hybrid mode. Sometimes we, we meet online. Sometimes we meet in person in the classroom with you know masks, and of course six part uh, feet apart from each other. Uh, that has been going okay. Uh, of course, a lot of cha challenges, technical issues along the way, trying to solve those. Um, you know, constantly. Um, do you like teaching? How do you teach? What do you think about teaching composition? Uh, I like teaching. Yeah, I mean, a teaching composition is uh, supposed to be, I guess, in my philosophy, very tailored plan, you know, that should meet each student's unique level, uh, need, and aspirations. So that's- But that's do, you think, do you think we can teach composition? My question is. Uh, I think we can try to guide students, but that's a really good question. Like from my personal experience, I, I learned lots of techniques, skills um, from my teacher, but I guess the core creative part is not like, taught was not taught by my teacher it was something we can teach how to compose i think so we can you teach all so? technical technical things technical aspects mm -hmm. uh but how to cultivate a personal voice uh, the unique you know uh, authentic personal voice would be something that the students have to explore by themselves mm -hmm. We can, we can. Back in the history of music, there were some composers who, did, who had difficulties, like for example, Bartok teaching compositions. He always preferred to teach piano, mm -hmm. and exactly because that was always so personal. And composition is really very, very personal because everyone it's it's it's, it's doing it in a different way. Right. And but but the techniques are all, always very important, like doing the homeworks. Yeah. Back to your question, like how do I teach my students? I guess I always ask what they want you know, what, what their purpose is, how, how they want to imp, imp express certain things. Uh, so that's number one priority that for me, how to help them to achieve the goals that they want it, instead of um, forcing my ideas to, you know, into their compositions. What do you think about having lessons from the old masters, Beethoven, Bach, Mozart, and they're all our teachers. They were teachers for millions of musicians, millions yep. of composers, and they're still our greatest teachers. Mm -hmm. And we find, we find always them as our real teachers. And we, yep. we learned, we learned through their works. So, you know, I, why I'm giving this question because, you know, uh, composers uh, sometimes like to do analysis of the works of the past. You know, it brings to mind idea of the Messian, Oliver Messian, who I was also writing, by the way, some dissertation when I was in Poland about his vision de element, the cycle for two pianos. And I studied his work because I met his students of the musicologists who actually work with him. So, you know, he always tried to analyze the pieces and that was the lesson of composition, but also in terms of the, not in a practical way. So you go through the piece and you talk about this piece. So actually you have a conversation. And because, you know, those 
masters from the past, th those are the greatest teachers, you know? Yes, I totally agree. I learned a lot from all those masters. Mm -hmm. Do you still study? Do you still, still which composer do you study? Um, it depends. Um, every time before I, I start a piece, I would study, uh, you know, similar instrumentation um, or some universal common repertoire. Um, I mean, my favorite composers include um, Polish composer Lutzowski, um, and Finnish composer Saraho, uh, and the, you know, uh, German Korean composer Wusik Chin, and also some you know masters like Stravinsky, Bartok, Beethoven for sure. So those are mm -hmm. my favorite list. Mm -hmm. But when you're now talking about those old masters, I will give you another question related to the festival about the Chopin. Because also you did some, I remember, arrangement for the Ophius Orchestra of his second piano concerto at Maino. It, it was played at the Carnegie Hall, I think it was two years ago, if I'm right. Two or three years ago? Uh, two years ago, yes. Two years ago, yes, I remember. So tell me, do you find any inspirations uh, in the music of Chopin? And how do you think about this music? Uh, does it have any reflection in your writing? So what is your connection with Chopin? Uh, my connection with Chopin, I mean, as a pianist, I played lots of his pieces. You know, his, his harmonic language is, is really rich. Uh, I especially appreciate that side of his music. Um, it, it was a, but he I, didn't write for orchestra. You are very, you like orchestras, big ensembles, right? He didn't yeah, write. I, I can see his music definitely has some orchestral thinking. You know, although he, he didn't really write for orchestra, he's, he's, you can see from his pianistic works, you, you see the, all those consideration and, and thinking and the potential to become. Yes, you can. Yes, Suing, but it, you know, there were some composers tried to orchestrate his preludes, even some little mazurkas, great conductors. It never worked very much because the sound of the mm -hmm. piano, it's so associated with this music and the colors that when you also put it on the orchestra regarding rubato something, uh, it didn't work that well. Yes, that I, I can say, I can see. Uh, so I'm not sure if my orchestration works or not. I, I try my best to, that's the thing, when you arrange something, you cannot let your personal voice be heard. You, I, you, so that, that's why I tried my best to not be myself and try to, put my head into, you know, his shoes. Mm -hmm. um, yes, but you just, you just concerto that he did. So you did reduction, right? Reduction yes. of his piano concerto. It was not orchestration from the piano work, like from the Polonaise or something. Right. Right. It was or a orchestra. reduction. It was really challenging for me because I don't really do art, art arrangement that much. Even for my mm -hmm. own works, I don't arrange. I feel like the moment I finish the piece, the, pe the, the instrumentation and orchestration is such an important part of that piece. I agree, um, I agree. Uh, so you know, so fun. do you do you consider rewriting your pieces, like some composer did, like chamber work? But now you're gonna do it with your concertos because you're yeah. gonna have concertos for ensemble yeah. and their solist. I keep pushing that back because I I feel that would be a really challenging job for me to do, even from to my own works. You know, I have this really specific idea for quintet everything was crafted around this quintet setting when I wrote this, those pieces and now I gotta arrange them to uh, adapt them to orchestra. That's gonna be a, a tough task. Uh, you can write I a new piece, you can write a new piece or you know, or you can write orchestration. We can add some measures, you know, with, when for example, Ravel was doing orchestration, orchestration, he sometimes added some measure, he changed something slightly, the bass. You know, it's a very challenging, it's like a, also like a part of a composition, but you know, we have two kind of composers, if you mm -hmm. agree with me. If you, go, you have absolute music like Bach, which can be played on any instrument, mm -hmm. it is also the structure of music itself, it's so rich, that always speaks to us. But there are also some composers that are working specifically with the instrument and the color specifically with this instrumentation. And rewriting those pieces for the different instrument, it, it a little bit, it destroys the piece itself, because the piece came out from the sound. And so, and uh, if you, well, because your mu music has a very rich palette of sounds and colors. So you mentioned that Kaya Sariako, right? Lutoslavsky. And so tell me, how do you find, um, how do you find your colors and how do you find those sounds 
uh, in your music? Do you try by yourself? You try to look for sounds, or maybe you you work with musicians. How do you do that? Uh, yeah, working with musicians is definitely a very important part of, uh, of my composition note process. Uh, whenever I, I have the opportunity, I definitely want to consult musicians. Uh, I myself only play piano, so I know piano well. Um, although I've learned orchestration, uh, I think in the in the uh, practical side of realizing those scores into live sound, uh, the the performers would be the most reliable resources for us to go to. Uh, then that's one thing I would do. And another thing is, of course, like learning from the previous masters, analyzing their scores, learn a lot from them as well. And then, you know, the process of rehearsing, workshopping, reading uh, is also a very important step. Do you also conduct? You do. I, I do conduct. Uh, I, I mean, I studied conducting in college uh, with um, my conducting teacher, Glenn Asad and Edward Cumming. I was so fortunate that they took me almost like a conducting major student. I got to have weekly lessons with them uh, that, you know, gave me a very- That was in, Harf that was in Harford. Yeah, hard school. Um, hard school, I had so much great experiences there as undergraduate. That's great, very important later, yes. But also, do you play piano? Play, you still play yeah, piano? Yeah, I play piano. I started playing piano since I was seven years old. Uh, nowadays, I don't really practice that much. Uh, I, I wish I could practice more. I, I, still, I still play piano. Okay, okay. But do you, do you consider piano as an important instrument in your music? Uh, the, when you wrote for the, for example, for the for corners, piano always mostly had a very important role in most of those pieces. Yeah, as that's, I remember. That's very, I'm a pianist, you know. I, I want to give the piano as much um, potential as possible. That's just a natural tendency for me to have. Uh, and also, yeah, when I compose, I I, I, I do sometimes consult piano. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Not a piano. Do you compose the piano or do you compose in the head? How do you do? That's, or, or, uh, uh, well, I do not really compose at a piano. I, sometimes I would use piano to get my um, like basic framework, like harmonic length, harmonic structure, um, my tone series, things like that. And then once I am done with that, I don't really use piano to, to continue my composing process. Mm -hmm. But do you um, have some sort of plan beforehand? I usually would use uh, word description or graphic uh, illustration to to plan out the whole thing, the whole structure and form. Although you know, in the real process of composing, those plans will get altered and changed all the time. But I, I like to have some sort of blueprint before I start to put down notes on the paper. Yes, that many composers do that. That's right. That's correct and very good. No, and to tell us maybe last thing about if you can compare education because you got education from China and you got education from the United States. So do you think the environment where you live changes how do you write? And tell me about the differences of education in Shanghai and in Hartford and, and uh, Michigan uh, and Arbor. Yeah, uh, I get this question a lot, but then to be honest, I only spent you know, less than two years in Shanghai. That was the very initial uh, years of my my compo composing composition studies, and then my majority part uh, of learning uh, was completed here in the U.S. Um, it was ten years. So two years versus ten years. I can only say, from my very short experiences in Shanghai, um, it it was a good way to to get some techniques skills. Um, that, those foundation, you know, into your system in the early years. And then later, uh, after I've gotten here uh, at high school in Michigan, I was encouraged to uh, more bravely, I guess, express my personal, personal uh, voice. It's just, it's just a lot more freedom. But then Again, I think um, those early experiences building my uh, technical foundation and skills are are very important for me to have later, you know, those freedom. Because without the techniques, you, you don't really um, get to be free, in my sense. 
But yeah, do you there's think a balance. there's a balance if, between technical? Yes, yes. Mm -hmm. If you would study, for example, I don't know, like in Europe or maybe in Australia, do you think you would go for the same path? We don't know that. Probably but not. with your harmonic probably. language and yeah, no, probably not. Uh, my early works, um, I guess I pay a lot of t attention to the techniques as of, you know, technique is the most important part of the pieces. And but later I can transform to pay more attention of the practicality, um, you know, how to get this piece performed, um, uh, like appreciated and understood by audience. How, uh, how to get the piece more idiomatic so more players would be interested. And, you know, I try to find a balance between that side and how to express my personal identity mm -hmm. through music. Um, and then techniques would be a tool to serve those purposes, but not a, the most important part of the, the piece anymore. So, but well, I, I have I, a question. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. I have a question, like Lukosavsky said, um, do you compose for players or you compose for yourself? So, you know, what Zosowski said, because always he composed, I was write the music that I would like to hear. I don't care if the other would like to hear, but I would like to hear this music. So what do you think about this? Oh, I, I don't really think I compose for myself like that. Mm -hmm. That is a little bit too self-serving to me. Mm -hmm. Uh, and of course, you know, inevitably, my music is this, um, it carries my personal voice and identity. Um, but I, I like to think I compose to, to share, you know, I want to share some universal human emotions and experiences with my audience. Um, because I think as human, we always, we, we're lonely, you know, we, we want to share to seek more understanding that's just a natural path for me to uh, navigate as a composer. I use music as, as the, the tool to do that. So I compose for, for, you know, to share. But do you also compose without the commission, just for yourself, like Ice, uh, Charles now, Ice, for example? Now it is, it's hard um, because I, I, I do have some commissions and deadlines to, to catch. I would love to, you know, just, keep composing but right now i'm still like trying to catch little deadlines and commissions when do you do you use your best time to compose? yeah but my best time used to be in the daytime i especially in the morning time uh, i feel like i feel most i feel the sharpest in the morning time i could get lots of done at least in the planning part and in the afternoon i could get some technical work done like i would already have the blueprint or framework i just need to fill in those details in the afternoon and sometimes in the evening i could get a few hours too when I was a freelancing composer. So those are great times. I feel like I just need a, a chunk of time, like a few days to get into that process. And once I'm there, I compose really fast. But nowadays, it's the thing I work every day, uh, I teach. Um, you know, I, I feel I do have the time sometimes, you know, one or two hours every day, but it's hard for me to, to get into that, that status. So I'm still struggling. So I'm hoping to, to get some time in the winter break. Mm -hmm. Great. Get some more composing done. So you, you can be like Mahler composing during the vacation and the semester working. Yeah, yeah. But unlike many composers, I'm not a um, night owl. I, I work in daytime primarily. Mm -hmm. You are lucky. I wish I, I were the same I, because, you know, I, I compose at night. And you know, a lie is always the best, and it's very difficult. Great showing! Thank you for sharing every, every, everything with us. So all the best! Congratulations for this new position. I, I hope that you will uh, visit often also in New York because you, you, you lived so here for two years, me. for we two years, miss, right? Yeah, we really missed um, working with you. And but let's hope that next year, every concert we can meet in person, and everything will be, will get better. So. All the best, congratulations for the CD, all the best for Four Corners from the foundation and from the Chopin Festival. And yeah. thank you, Shuang, for your conversation. All right, bye. Bye, 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 bye.
Thank you. 